The bell sounds to start this event here at the Astro Arena tonight. And 15 minute time limit is the governing factor. The man doing the arguing on the left is Mohammed Farouk, the irritated Iranian. His opponent, Tommy Siegler, who hails from Greenville, South Carolina. Fine, personable young man, referee Branko Lubitsch. And Lubitsch, of course, a man who is approved by the National Wrestling Alliance's referee, sometimes approved by fans, sometimes disapproved, which is the history of every official, no matter what sport he governs, from playing checkers to boxing or wrestling or whatever it might be. So Tommy, Sieg Tommy Siegler and Mohammed Farouk. We've got a bunch of youngsters who are celebrating birthdays here at the Astro Arena tonight. And I'd like to bring you the name of a couple of them. Wish them a happy birthday. Ben Allen Jones is 10 years of age. We wish Ben Allen Jones a happy birthday. And San Juan Cabrales come, has come up here from Palacios, Texas to celebrate his birthday. He's 12 years of age and we wish him a happy birthday. So to Ben Allen Jones and San Juan Cabrales, happy birthday. Mohamed Farouk is not having a happy day. Tommy Siegler is on his toes and ready to bounce back. Tommy Siegler is ready to retaliate at the earliest moment. And Farouk takes a ribbing from the fans from the moment he steps into the ring. His very irritation at the manner in which fans treat him is often a um, signal for fans to mistreat him even further. So Farouk is putting forth a convincing argument. Even veteran Bronco Lubitsch believed him to a certain extent. Japanese arm lock. Farouk moving in with good balance. Well, at least Farouk can't claim that his hair was pulled, but he is claiming that he was jerked by the tights. But what actually happened was that he had a fairly well-balanced position, but Tommy Siegler just maintained a position where he could get driving leg strength against that hold, and he pushed with his legs, not with his arm, and he upset uh, Mohammed Farouk. Siegler with his back to you. Nice block by Siegler, and it left him wide open. Ratch lift and slam, and Siegler is now looking to discourage the Arab from some of the wild tactics he enjoys pursuing. He obviously enjoys them. But I think he did not enjoy what happened to him then. The hard landing on the canvas, the uh, bounce that uh, hits you from one end to another is what makes a body slam effective. So, Tommy Siegler is balancing well against the efforts of uh, Mohammed Farouk in the early moments of this match. And Farouk is trying two things in that hair pulling. One, of course, is to keep the referee bouncing around from one side to another, and he feels that if he does this, he's going to find an opening someplace. But as long as the referee stands in one spot and watches every move that he makes, he's not going to be able to make it. Close. You see Lubitsch as he is looking at Siegler's shoulders and missing the fact that um, the Iranian is heisting Tommy up by the trunks and standing him on his right smack on his shoulders. Side headlock. Farouk's head sticks out there like the other end of a watermelon. But at times when Tommy puts the squeeze on, it looks like he's 
He's got a prune under his arm. Five minutes have gone by, and Ziegler is the man in command. You see those fancy boots of uh, Mohammed Farouk? There they are, a nice close-up. Jim Mulig, our director, brings you right up into the ring so that you can examine them, camel and all. But that strange appendage on the toe of the boot is sometimes put to various uses by, or I should say nefarious use by Farouk. And Farouk into the ropes. No, he foxed them. Ha ha! Well, Farouk was so anxious to demonstrate to these fans that he was capable of a really unusual move, <laughs> that he was capable suddenly of finding himself on the concrete. That's the way you feel when you have no hair to protect your head. Well, there are lots of us who feel that way. Mohammed Farouk. Listening to the count. You notice that the referee was keeping it where he could see it. Shouting at the same time. And again, side headlock. Now listen to those fans. These Astro Arena fans, vocal, verbal. Top man is Siegler. Now a reverse chin lock as he catches it with the with the chin right in the crook of the arm. When you see that, you know that it's not a strangle. Strangle, of course, means that you're preventing a man from breathing. Farouk already has cauliflower ears. The working on them by Siegler is not going to improve them. Top man, Tommy, but, well, referee Bronco Lubitsch couldn't have had better evidence than that. But now, as the foot is taken off, Bronco went for the count and moved around there swiftly, too. Chin lock with Siegler losing. Ziegler bends into his work, keeps a good balance. It changes to a side head lock. Now the effect of all these holds is a little bit different. And sometimes you find that you change the position of your arm just a little bit on some people and you have a more effective grip. Everybody's built just a little bit differently. Everybody takes a, their pain just a little differently. And Tommy Ziegler with a good, good move. He didn't run into that foot. He saw it coming up, but he sure did use it. Sigal is old. And he has used the side headlock uh, frequently and used it efficiently in this match. Oh, oh, he caught that one right in the throat. Now, Tommy's going to have trouble. Under the chin and up against the throat, and again, this one, with the fingers extended and joined, and he drove the tips of those fingers into Tommy Siegler's exposed and unprotected throat. And Farouk is making up for lost moments in this match. Not only making up for lost moments, he has handed out punishment to Tommy Sigler that is tough to take. Farouk following up and that drive with that boot. And again, that strange looking curved appendage on his boots 
Of course, when he uses the sole of the foot, it doesn't seem to make that much difference, but it does make a difference when he manages to hook the bottom part. Five minutes remain in this event. The time limit is 15 minutes, but Farouk in behind using a his own version of a reverse chin lock on Tommy Farouk. Farouk stays in that tight. Siegler is trying to loosen the the grip on the on the chin, but he he's a little off balance. But he's fighting the arm now. He's fighting it well. He was off balance, and Farouk knew it. And Farouk sounds off in Arabic to the fans here. I don't know how many understand him. That was in English. Allah Farouk. There's the boot. And again, Tommy Siegler using a lot of strength and very little leverage. He was forcing that arm up. And those hard kicks. Here's a tough spot for Siegler. Mohamed Farouk dropping in there with that knee. He had pulled down that knee bandage just a little bit to expose the bone of the kneecap so that he wouldn't land with the protected knee. You can see that it's still exposed. And he was using that for that uh, purpose. Ripped it. And this time he very definitely used the uh, strange looking shoe that he wears and used it to to rip across the face. There was a bounce on the head, but Siegler was not ready to quit, and that boy is never ready to quit. Never. Time is starting to become a factor in this match, as a hip lock becomes a factor in this match. Tommy Siegler, but no target. Farouk rolled out of the way, and here comes Farouk to land. Oh, 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 he caught Siegler with a foot, but um, he had intended to land with his broad back across the body of Tommy Siegler, and it didn't quite work out that way. Both trying for the pin, they'd like the sudden pin. There are two minutes to go in this event as Siegler pushed them in the ropes, but the the effort off the rope as he came off the rope caught both of them half with half a body and that's what spun them around in different directions but a hard crash now the fans are hollering for Tommy to get up there and do something about it in the short time that remains hard landing Tommy's feet may have saved him from a uh, losing slam that time. That back body drop can be a vicious thing to take, but his feet hit well that time. Usually, when they hit, the onlooker thinks that he saved himself, and yet the very landing on the feet sometimes will shatter you all the way through. Ah, sunset flip. There's one, there's two, and Farouk came close to it. There's a minute to go, and... Uh, Tommy Siegler moves in to try to even it. This could be it. There's one, there's two, only two. And Farouk with the effort into the turnbuckle and a drive. And he landed on a chair that time, and he could have sustained a lasting injury. Now that he, he did not get thrown over the top rope. Actually, he raced into the turnbuckle himself. That's the chair. He's going to take out the, the chair on 
on, on Sigler. It wasn't Sigler that knocked him into the chair, but the struggle for the chair becomes a certain thing. There is the countdown. Sigler's on top, but the bell rings. 15 minutes have ended, and the... A 15-minute draw. We'll be back with you after this word from the studio.